Alright guys, starting where we left off. So Godot uses partial classes in C sharp. If you're not familiar with that is, you could look it up. It's uh basically you're extending a class, you're adding to a class without changing the original class. So if you're coming from Unity, the difference is with the main functions such as uh, start, update, and input, I think. In Godot we have ready process, uh physics process and input. So in Unity, you have a fixed update. That's physics process in Godot. So to start, let's just use the ready function. So let's say public override uh, void underscore ready. And then we can print out something. I don't know why that did that. but So in order to access the functions of Godot, like the base functions, you could say GD and then you could like print and other type of functions. Could check the list. Random values. You could get range, seeds, stringify. So let's print for now. So print and say hello to do. Alright, save that and then we come back over to Godo and then we Save and run the scene. Mm. Yo, hello, hello. So now I went ahead and imported uh, some models that we're gonna use. So we have a character here, and if you go, if you have blend files, Godot doesn't actually import them automatically. So you have to go to editor, editor settings, go to the import tab under the file system, and then set a path for Blender. And what it does, it just import a saved blend file. So you would have to bake your textures inside of Blender and resave it with the baked textures because it doesn't import the, you know, you know what I'm talking about. It doesn't import Blender shaders. All right, so let's double click on the character here. So this, this is the import option scene when you want to change stuff on your import. For example, I want the scene, the main scene to be a character body 3D. You could change it to whatever you want it to be. And I want all these animations to be looping. So you could go over here to the settings. I have it a linear. And that's pretty much that. Now let's re import. Uh, errors. I think that is to do with my materials. Right now I don't have a actual material set. So we need to create one. Let's go back here. Stay off for now. Yeah. So let's go to textures. I have this color map here. We're gonna create a material for it. So right click, go to create new resource. You could say standard material, material 3D. Save this as color map, color map, res, and save it in textures. I could double click and you have all your different options here. So what I wanna go in is albedo, color, change that to be the material so you could hit quick load and it searches for the textures in the project itself and we want the color map and that's it for that for now maybe give it a little shininess if you want to save and reopen this guy <coughs> I'll click material use external on then got this guy selected then reimport all right now we need to right click let's see create new inherited scene here we go what we're gonna do here is now we need to create a mesh collision mesh for this guy collision shape and we're gonna add a script to it let's say right click on this guy we say new uh, collision shape 3d let's use a circle shape over here in inspector move that up to about here and we could add a character script let's just call it player and we could use a character 3D, but we're gonna do it from scratch so I could explain what's going on. Alright, now we in a character body. So, what we need to do here now, in order to export variables, we want to create a speed variable that we could change in the inspector. We need to use a square backwards and type export here. Then type in the name of the variable. So let's say public float speed let's 
give it a default to five for now. And we need another one, so we have to do another export again. Export public float uh, jump velocity. Maybe eight for now. And then we need gravity. Let's see, 8.19. Okay. So in the process function, we need to get a reference to its velocity. The velocity is already built into the character, so we need to get a vector three. Let's call it velocity. And then velocity. Oops. I don't know why this happens sometimes. I would have sometimes it doesn't auto complete, so I have to close the project down, close our VS Code, then open it again. All right, that was being weird. Now let's see velocity. All right, so we need to get the input from the player. So let's see, uh, vector two input equals input. This is what you use to grab stuff. Grab input from the keyboard or controller. Let's say get vector. We have to set this up. So you start from the lower number on the X, so left. Then you get right. Then you get up. But we're gonna use, yeah, we're gonna use up here and then down. Cause it's on the Z axis is negative uh, down. Let me go back here. I think I already created this. I recorded the whole project and it wasn't recording audio. <laughs> kind of sucked at that, but here you go. So you go into input, then you set all the key bindings here. Let's do that real quick. So we need left and right as D, W, S, D, and up, and then down. And let me add jump as well. So we're gonna do jump. Add spacebar. Close that. Save. <clears throat> Let's go back in the strip. So now that we got the input, we could print it out if you want, just to see it. So GD print input. Save that and run the scene. Okay, that was rare. So let's reattach that script. It was using a sub script for some reason. Not sure why. So load that up. Now we should be fine. So let's save that and then check the scene. Save. Reload. There you go. So now I could press A and D, left and right. Then up and down. Remember, I have it backwards. Alright, so now we need to get some input. This guy here, get rid of this. So we need to get his direction. So vector three direction is equal to let's say input really new input new vector three input dot x. Oops x and then zero because we're not changing anything on z directly that's gonna be for gravity and then we need to set its velocity now so we could say velocity equals direction times speed we're gonna do a change here so we'll leave that as is now we say velocity is equal to this low case velocity and then we call move and slide if you're new to Godot from unity move and slide is how the character actually moves it takes the value from the velocity and applies it to the character and it's the preferred way to do it if you interact with uh, rigid bodies with a kinematic body all right so that should just work uh, save and go back into the editor let's go here we're gonna create um a simple floor use a csg box uh turn this off it's 
weird sometimes. For me anyways. Could either drag these handles or you could type out the value here. So six by six, I guess. By two point five. Oh. Alright, and then I need to set the collision to be on. Call this floor for now. And then you press the main icon to link a scene. So we're gonna link that player scene, add it to it, and now we have the sky layer. Right, so whenever we run a scene, we well we need a camera, that's first of all. Second of all, we need to get the scene to be in the running game. So to do that we come up here by these three dots here and we apply these as a new node. So this is for the directional light, just leave it at defaults. And you notice that's gone now. And then this one is for the environment. They just give you the main the main like like colours and stuff like that, but there's a lot more you could do here. There you go all these you know what directional light is all right so we need a camera so let's go here let's add a node 3d so this is going to be the root for the camera call this game cam uh, game cam and then we could go to here again and then add a camera 3d now let's set this be right on top of the player then because this is a child of this it's gonna be an offset so we could move this about here and rotate it to look at the player and you could press this preview here to see it what it look what it's looking at move it up a bit and make it look downwards a little bit there you go that's fine now this scene should work, so let's run it and see what's happening. There you go. Now our player is moving. Need to add gravity though. So let's do that real quick. <clears throat> Need to open that. Alright, so gravity. Let's do that before. So see, oops, before adding the speed. So velocity. Oh. We need to check if it's on floor first. So if character controller have a few convenience functions. So we have is on floor. We have is on ceiling as well. And we have is on wall. There's a there's a few stuff. So we say you can get the opposite. So first of all, if he's not on floor, you want to change that velocity the y. To increment by or decrement by gravity times delta. And that's this guy here. Unless we need to cast that to be a float. The delta. Alright, else we don't do anything. Right here. Oh, we could do it else right here and check if uh we could jump. So else Let's go here if the input for jumping so input that is action pressed just pressed we're checking for jump so jump velocity equals velocity y it is equals to jump velocity all right and it's and if we fall, oh, not falling. Maybe I'm doing something wrong here. Let's double check. That's my mistake. So right here, instead of setting the velocity, I need to actually set velocity dot x to be direction dot x times speed, and then velocity dot z equals direction dot z. Um, speed. <clears throat> I should fix that issue. Minimize this. Let's run again. There you go. I can jump. It's too high, but <laughs> alright, guys. So in the next video, we're gonna cover setting up his animations. That's it for this one. So like and subscribe. See you in a bit.